holy shit, Rambolime is real? I'm not sponsored, but I should be. So this video is a remake of my first video ever that I made back in spring of 2020. I deleted that video because it was very clearly my first video. It was very amateurish, and I think I can do better now that I've had two years to think about it and work on YouTube and learn the ropes. A lot has changed, and you know, a lot hasn't. You may know me now as someone primarily concerned with mods, specifically mods for the Fallout series, but that isn't how this channel got its start. This channel got its start because my high school shut down halfway into my final semester. Fortunately for me, there were two games that released the year prior that I had been meaning to get around to, and at that point I had what felt like all the time in the world. In a time where everything felt like it was kinda coming down around me, I found two of my favorite games of all time, Disco Elysium and Pathologic 2, and they're my entire personality now. I can't shut up about these games, even in videos that are ostensibly entirely unrelated. This is a video about Pathologic 2 and its predecessor in the form of Pathologic Classic HD. Today I'm going to be talking about my experiences with these games, why I love them so much, what they mean to me, and now, what they mean to this channel. Thank you all for 10,000 subscribers. That's right, Halloween special, 10,000 subscriber special, <clears throat> one video, let's go! Pathologic is a very weird, small, Russian horror story about a town, a plague, and three doctors trying to salvage the situation in a mere 12 days. In the original game, you choose from one of three doctors to play as, all of whom have their own paths and gameplay quirks. There's The Bachelor, a Reddit moderator, The Harrispex, a reverse organ donor, and a small rat child named The Changeling fleeing charges of tax evasion and identity fraud. As mentioned, they all have variations on how they play, but in broad strokes they are pretty similar. Whichever path you choose, the game can be categorized as a survival horror RPG. You spend a lot of time talking to people, making choices, it's spooky scary sometimes, and the main mechanical challenge challenge the game throws at the player is resource management. Keeping on top of your health, hunger, exhaustion, infection, and reputation are pretty challenging, and doing this gets more difficult the farther into the story you go as the plague claims more and more of the town. Food prices go up, you have more to do each day, and each day is a timed event, so every second you spend scavenging or exploring is time you're potentially wasting, which can lead to many of the game's characters dying prematurely. If you've watched my video on Fallout Dust, much of what I said about the gameplay of that mod lies ends up well to Pathologic. Pathologic isn't nearly as combat-centric as Dust, but it still forces the player to make uncomfortable choices to survive in consistently hostile, alien, and very much changing circumstances. Often, you will be forced to neglect one thing for another, you make sacrifices, and centrally, you may end up doing immoral and sometimes even evil things because it means you'll survive to see the next day and do it all again. The central challenge of the game is keeping on top of your meters, but the central gameplay loop is somehow even more torturous. 80% of your time in Pathologic will be spent walking in between the people you need to talk to and quests you need to complete. I've seen Pathologic compared to Morrowind online in places, which does have some validity. You're thrust into a world completely alien to you, left to sort out the situation yourself as you walk dreadfully slowly from place to place, all the while the early 2000s render distance makes every environment look coated in a thick fog. Also the combat in both games is janky as hell, so y you know, there's that too. The difference is that while Morrowind gives you discovery and hero fantasy, Pathologic gives you discomfort, stress, and overwhelming dread about what's coming next. Every aspect of the game is created to be as unwelcoming as possible, down to the manner in which the characters speak. Most of the time you don't spend walking in Pathologic will be spent talking, and every character talks like a fusion between the people in those real-life Oblivion NPC memes and the characters in a platonic dialogue. Every line is verbose and wordy and ominous, and this is especially the case for the sequel, which I'll get to in a moment. Some of the people in this world are misshapen and strange, there's a lot of mysticism going on, and nothing about the town really makes sense. The lore of the town and the surrounding world is never really explained in more than tiny fragments. The town doesn't map onto any specific existing town, culture, or even time period. It's all very ambiguous and difficult to parse, and intentionally so. At the end of every day, you get a counter telling you how many people died in that 24-hour period, and the number can be ridiculously high, like in the thousands. Which doesn't make a lot of sense based on the physical space of the town. Like, to my eye, there shouldn't be more than maybe a couple thousand people. That is, unless every house is packed like the Termit's at, I mean, like a clown car. Strangely enough, though, it all works. Pathologic didn't fail at creating an enjoyable game, it succeeded at making an unenjoyable one. 
Pathologic has gained a steady cult following over the years, in the last few years especially because of its coverage on YouTube. My first exposure to the game was through Soul Matul's channel, her videos on the topic inspired me to give the game a shot. Before that point, I wasn't really aware that a project of this niche and small could ever do such interesting things with its gameplay and story. The original Pathologic made me feel things I had never felt playing a game before. This is one of the reasons I started making videos on this channel, and the main reason I drifted into mods actually. I really want people to have the same experience that I did, experience weird small projects that don't get a lot of coverage. Anyway, 2020, shit hits the fan, I remember Pathologic 2 came out a year before, I try it and it makes me feel everything I felt before but more and stronger and better. Pathologic 2 at the time of my first video only contained one path, the hair specs, the organ grabber. They're working on another route that looks entirely different on a fundamental level from everything we have and will be discussing, but the Harrisbex path in 2 and the 3 paths in Classic play mostly the same. For future viewers, we're talking survival horror RPG Pathologic 2, not uh, time travel mind palace fruit ninja Pathologic 2, whatever, moving on. Pathologic 1 and 2 are roughly retellings of the same general events. Same town, mostly same characters, roughly same plot events. A lot of people like to describe 2 as a remake or a reimagining of 1. The game opens with a character telling you that your performance in the first game was subpar, and you beg them to do it again, this time with updated graphics. It's a little meta that that's basically what I'm doing, isn't it? Pathologic 2 does a lot of really fascinating things that the first game didn't. For example, its quests are conveyed through a mind map web menu, which collects and connects evolving pieces of information as you receive them for you to intuit goals from. When you die in Pathologic 2, you're given a gameplay consequence like your max health is reduced, and this penalty exists even if you load a previous save. This makes save scumming impossible and makes dying a real consequence that hurts you in more than just load time. I think the biggest thing for me though is just that its characters are a lot more emotionally resonant. In part, this is due to the characters just looking a little more human than in the first game. In dialogue, each of their faces are purposefully stylized. The lighting in these shots does not at all match the lighting in the rooms they're in, but what it does match is their character. For example, Ruben, a character the protagonist has a very conflicted and shaky relationship with, his face is only halfway into the light every time you talk to him. Laura's face, on the other hand, is entirely in the light, as she is, for the first part of the game, one of the only characters truly and sincerely kind to the protagonist. And Bad Grief, the town edgelord, is permanently Kubrick staring at you. It's kind of creepy, it's kind of annoying, I kind of want to wiggle his cheek, you know? Hey everybody, this is editing Ramble Lime. I'm just looking at the footage right now. Does he look like Syndrome from The Incredibles? The, the, he kind of looks like Syndrome from The Incredibles. Drop a comment if you think he looks like Syndrome, like Syndrome from The Incredibles. These three characters are all old childhood friends of Pathologic 2's protagonist, and the emotional bond that's implied between them, now wavering and stale with time, is imparted on the player through even small things like these camera and lighting choices. Looking at these characters makes me feel certain ways about them, which reinforces the emotional damage the player feels when they miss a key quest and one of them catches the plague. One of the more unique things Pathologic does as a game is engage with children and childhood and child characters deeply. It's a big trope in media to have stories with grizzled, problematic, or violent adult male protagonists that are forced into fatherhood or pseudo-fatherhood. You know, forced to take care of a child and in their relationship, the guy grows as a person. When I say deeply here, I mean that Pathologic goes far beyond this trope. The children in Pathologic 2 don't exist to set up character development, I'd actually argue that it's kind of the opposite. In the game, you're tasked with ensuring the safety of everyone, of course, but especially the children. Each child has their own unique story, background, and personality as opposed to the stock innocent and sometimes mischievous child archetype we see all too commonly. Pathologic engages with the idea that children are, in fact, people with their own identities, interests, beliefs, and in Pathologic 2, political factions. Some of these kids are adorable, some of them are extremely annoying, some of them speak like little kids do, and some of them speak like kids who are forced to grow up sooner than they deserved. There are stakes that exist in Pathologic 2 that I can't say exist for any other game I've played, because not only do I love all of these kids and I would die for all of them, they can and honestly likely will die. The game will do everything it can to kill these kids. Not many other games are willing to engage with that kind of thing, especially not in the enthusiastic manner that Pathologic 2 does. 
The second game is a better experience on the whole than the first, not just because it's harder and more emotionally harrowing, but because it engages with the whole spectrum of human emotion in ways the first game only really ever received a passing grade in. The town in both games features an expansive step to the east, and in both games there's a feeling of reverence to be found there. The step is untouched by the plague, as the Harrisbex you can find plants which can be made to heal with, and in Pathologic 2 the step theme is similar to the theme of the protagonist living quarters. These are the only two spaces in the game where you're actually safe. People, including myself two years ago, like to make a big deal about how hard and unfun Pathologic 1 and 2 are, and I'll grant that a lot of the game does feel this way, but I also think it's selling the game's short to hyper-focus on that aspect, and not the other aspects which make it so fundamentally smart, unique, and human. Pathologic 2 especially emphasizes that human part. Suffering is everywhere, it's brutal and hard and you die a lot, but in the relationships you form with the kids of the town, through the burnt out friendships you rekindle, there are things you're fighting for. Human connection and connection with the earth gives the protagonist a reason to keep trying to beat the odds and cure the plague. And when the player does actually manage to beat the plague, when they develop a cure, that sense of reverence comes back. The music swells and hope is instilled yet again to be taken away later and then given back over and over in a cycle, almost a dance between the fragile mortality of the human being and their immense potential for good. How do these two interact? How does one change the other? From its gameplay, to its story, to its characters, Pathologic 2 forces you to answer these questions before you even realize that's what you're doing when you refuse to save a baby in a plague-ridden house because you don't think the risk of death is worth it. That's a really brutal thing to think about, and it's up to you to reconcile that. When Death Stranding released the same year as Pathologic 2, it had a very mixed reception. Similar to Pathologic in Death Stranding, the primary gameplay loop is walking up to an NPC, giving them what they want, and repeating that until you save the day. Also like Pathologic, Death Stranding goes seemingly far out of its way to make the traversal across the world very difficult and extremely time consuming. The depth of Death Stranding is only understood from the meta text. The meaning of the story is not discovered exclusively through its dialogue and cutscenes or through its gameplay, but from the meta narrative the Kojima Strand type game formula gives us through its use of online connectivity. The satisfaction gained by the player, the meaning of the game, in Pathologic and in Death Stranding is only fully understood once the player realizes that the suffering is part of the point of the work. These games, at their core, are trials designed to poke and prod at the player in very specific and, to me, very interesting ways. Death Stranding and Pathologic 2... <laughs> Are you done? Death Stranding and Pathologic 2 are very, very experimental games, very fundamentally different games from the type of games we often see, and they meant a lot to me, especially at the time that I played them. Yeah, I'm sorry, the original video was a COVID thing, so... Dan Olson of Folding Ideas did a fantastic video on the film Contagion around the time of the early pandemic. In that video, Dan discusses how watching that movie on repeat allowed him to feel out his emotions about the early pandemic in a controlled environment, where the problems he faced in real life were shared by the characters in a fictional space. He could relate to those characters, become immersed, and essentially trick himself into making his real feelings feel fake themselves. In his words, I am scared and anxious and uncertain, and so I will make myself more scared and more anxious and more uncertain because it's still fiction, it's still safe, it still has an end, it is bounded. This is what made Pathologic so important to me for that year of my life. I could let myself feel my feelings in a world where I had agency and where none of it was real. My COVID anxieties went into the machine and when I sat up from the desk, they stayed there. I don't know how I would have reacted to the situation without those games. And I also don't know where I'd be now. That Pathologic video was originally just like a vent for me. I didn't really expect it to get any views at all. I did it for me and because I was bored. It was month three of what would become a 13 month span where I didn't attend school and rarely was able to work. The video didn't get crazy views, but what it did get was an immense outpour of positivity, affirmation, and encouragement. It was that encouragement that made me want to make my Fallout 1 video, and then my Fallout 2 video, and then basically every video since. Pathologic may have meant a lot to me then for its role in helping me process those feelings, but its fans are what makes it mean so much to me now.
In conclusion, Icepick Lodge have made tremendous experiments with the form, and they're one of the few developers actively pushing games forward as a medium. If you love their stuff like I do, you're in my good books. If you haven't, you're two years late on playing it, but there's still time. Play Pathologic 2 first. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. As always, thank you to my patrons, with a special thank you to Adam Souza, Jack Bradley, Meple Dude, Ride, and Spritz. I think I'm going to upload that original Pathologic video to Patreon, so if you want to support the channel and see 17-year-old me stumble around with a blue snowball and baby's first premiere timeline, um, you can go there and support me in the description. As always, more videos on the way. Thank you everyone. 